As the Summit Lighthouse celebrates the 60th diamond anniversary and the new cycle on the cosmic clock, let us consider our cosmic origins and invoke the guiding light of the three wise men, Kuthumi, Dual Kul, and our guru, beloved El Mori. For 60 years, the Ascended Masters have kept the sacred fire alive in the heart of the Summit Lighthouse and in the hearts of their students worldwide. The Summit Lighthouse is the culmination of the dream of the Ascended Masters of many ages. When it began, we truly cannot say, for its inception is in the mind of God and that point of light whose origin is infinity. We see the glimpses and the traces of the organization in all previous endeavors of the Great White Brotherhood. We see coming to the fore the champion of the will of God, the Master El Moria, chief of the Darjeeling Council, who had contacted his messenger to be, Mark Prophet, even prior to this incarnation. El Moria founded the Summit Lighthouse to assist beloved Saint Germain in his contact with mankind in this century. And there is so little time to preserve the values that have come down to us through the centuries. Everywhere, the words of the masters ring out. They are not dead. They live. But they live in proportion to our acceptance of them. Otherwise, they are but hollow mockery, because we have heard the word and we are not doers of the word. Doers of the word makes us doors through which the light can shine. As we celebrate the diamond jubilee of our summit lighthouse, we step through a door to renewed opportunity. We move as one in the diamond heart of the mother and our own beloved El Moria. I am crystallizing before you the light of the diamond heart in a tremendous power. Each one of these little diamond crystals is triangular in shape and the blue flame is blazing within it and it is singing a song to the creator of all life saying, Thy will, O God, is good. Thy will, O God, is good. Thy will, O God, is good. And these blue flames are singing a peon of praise to the Father of life. And the crystal around them is made up of the radiant hopes of mankind as they are assembled. I have taken the spiritual hopes of many from among the unascended and the ascended hosts and it with my own hands formed in the air before you the crystal symbol of the diamond heart made up from the very hopes of life streams and carrying the radiation of my own heart. We pause in this doorway of time and look back at the years stretching behind us, back to that first life-changing moment when Mark Prophet heard the calling of Master Moria. One summer, I was working on the section laying steel for the Omaha Railroad. As the locomotive bell was approaching, the switch engine, there came a loud noise of the bell, clang, 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 clang. And suddenly, uh, the bell began to go in a very loud and melodic manner and with a certain vibratory quality that seemed to be continually a stepping up of the tempo. And if you won't make fun of me, I'll give you some idea of how it sounded. When suddenly around me there appeared a cloud, and as I brought my pickup into the air, during an interval of one second, five minutes of words were communicated to me. Out of the cloud, a voice spoke and said to me, My son, my son, and then I heard one of the great masters in the Far East speaking to me. And he had a specific work for the Brotherhood to communicate to me. Now, of course, I thought I was crazy. Until the following day, a thundering rap at the door announced by Western Union a verification of the very message the master had given me the day before. Mark continued to study with the Master El Moria during his years of fighting in World War II. Through the Brotherhood training, I would say to the rain, stop, and it would. And I would say to the rain, start, and it would. And I noticed all kinds of very strange things. People who attacked me were thrown to the ground by invisible hands. While Mark was being trained by the Brotherhood, Elizabeth was also discovering the masters in their teachings. 
and I was 18, and I stood in my mother's library, and I prayed a prayer to God that is probably the most important prayer of my life. And I said very simply, Dear God, thank you for my parents, my home, my education, all that you have given me. I am leaving now, and I will not be coming back. Is there anything that you have placed here for me of which I have not availed myself? And, much to my astonishment, I heard the voice of God speaking firmly and lovingly within my temple, saying, Go to the shelf, take up that book, and read it. I opened the book, and I saw for the first time in this life a portrait of the Ascended Master, Saint Germain. The spark went through my being. I couldn't believe that I had found this Master whom I recognized instantly. The two most important sponsorships of the Great White Brotherhood in the last centuries were the founding of the United States of America and the birth of the Summit Lighthouse. Beloved Saint Germain had sponsored the Messengers, Godfrey Ray King and Lotus Ray King in the I Am movement and given forth dispensations and teachings. As the cycles of the decades turned, Moria went before the karmic board to place his light the jewel of his crown upon the altar of St. Germain to continue St. Germain's work to sponsor an organization that would fulfill the plan of the continuing publication of the progressive revelation of the Ascended Masters. And so in 1958, in Washington, D.C., by a grant from the Karmic Board, Mark Prophet, under the direction of El Moria, founded the Summit Lighthouse. Its early beginnings were composed of just a nucleus of light bearers who caught the glimpse of the vision. I do the will of Moria L. tonight in what I tell you. He has said to me, pamper them and you lose them for God. Let them know and if they have enough resiliency of spirit and love of spirit to recognize it, they'll see the truth of what you say and they'll determine that they are going to win. Seven great Ascended Masters came to inaugurate and sponsor this activity. Here are excerpts from the seven dictations given on August 7, 1958. Do you realize, beloved, what a gracious opportunity this is, that you shall be a chalice of heaven into which I, Michael, shall charge the ray of protection for the God plan made manifest in the highest activity since I first took the first rut race home. Do you realize the tremendous power of love externalized? The quality of peace is a living thing, and it is only fitting that as you have the protection of Lord Michael, you should have the enshrining of my peace surrounding you at every moment of the way. It cannot be promised to you that you shall not, because you are yet unascended beings, feel the lash at times of conditions which might seem to be an attempt to rob you of the quality of peace. But I ask you at that moment to lift up your eyes to the zenith of heaven and visualize a beautiful golden orb at the very zenith of the sky and call forth your own beloved mighty I am present saying, beloved mighty presence of God which I am in me and beloved tranquility. From the zenith of the heavens pour out the radiant golden oil of peace to every horizon in my world. I offer you too in this day to drink of the cup of liquid love. Love is the greatest quality that there is in the universe because it represents all of the givingness of God. It represents his life poured out without limit. It represents his hope poured out without limit. It represents his faith 
in his spoken word to go forth and to accomplish his own purposes. The purpose for your being, the purpose for this activity is to fulfill God's will in ceremony, in worship, and in externalizing the beautiful quality of love. Therefore receive the radiation of pure charity, pure love, and know that the comfort you shall bring life in the future shall be so glorious that you shall rejoice even when you reach your ascension. You shall rejoice in the fact that you had the opportunity when you were yet on ascended to give of your glorious energies, to give of your faith, to give of your life to unascended mankind and to us of the ascended host this gracious gift of your love which you have given and which you will give that the borders of God's kingdom may be widened and expanded without limit to the four corners of the earth. March on, children of the heavenly host. March on. Hold your shield of faith high before you. Yes, hold it high. And realize that your hand is indeed in our hand. It is much better that you smile, dear hearts, than that you frown. For after all, the angelic hosts do externalize the smile of God wherever they go. For they spread the quality of comfort. And I am sure that you also as the Maha Chohan has spoken to you, felt the radiation of his comfort and his love. And now I want you to feel the radiation of my power and my will. Do you know, dear hearts, that the energy that I have charged forth in the various threefold activities is tremendous? Do you know that if you were to add it up, I do not believe this whole planet could contain the tremendous knowledge which I have charged forth? Nevertheless, here I am again at work. Now in this new activity, I assure you, I shall not take you by the coattails and compel you to do this or compel you to do that, but I am reaching out my love to you and telling you that I do expect you to give freely your wills to God. I do not compel you, but I expect you to do it because you have signified to me at inner levels that you are willing to do it. And I have believed you and have secured from Helios and Vesta a grant at great cost for this new activity. I, Gautama, Lord of the world, joyously call the children of earth to be conscious of the great light from the great central sun. This light, which is so high and so holy, is not easily bridged by an unascended being. But I say to you now, make the effort. Make the effort to reach even that light. For it is by constancy and application, it is by doing and believing, that you shall attain the same liberation which it has been my joy to receive from the very heart of God. Therefore, Hold fast to the qualities of the Godling, the God of happiness, and let your new activity be a happy activity, for truly the years shall roll swiftly by, and its completion shall be a thing of beauty if you will all get together and give of your energies and your time and hold your attunement high, and you will then reunite with us, and you will bring behind you trailing clouds of glory, as the poet said, from among the unascended of mankind, a large number of life streams who will be able to make their ascension much more quickly because of the light that came through all three activities, bearing in mind that the capstone at the top of the pyramid must have its place even as the lowest stone in the pyramid must be the foundation upon which it is builded. Note the ascended hosts stand even almost like at a football field where there are bleachers and we sit around you and we watch your activity with hope and we smile upon your endeavors because we know that you are the best hope 
that heaven has at this time, and we know that you freely give what you give. I'll always remember Mark not only as a great teacher and a messenger, but as a down-home kind of guy. He'd be your best buddy. He'd joke with you. He'd be your friend. Mark was one of the most fun-loving and spontaneous people I have ever known. In January of 1961, beloved Moria authorized the formation of the Keepers of the Flame fraternity to be comprised of a devoted group of students within the Summit Lighthouse who would make the commitment to Saint Germain, which Moria himself had made, to support this master of the Aquarian age. So the Keepers of the Flame fraternity then, authorized by El Moria, by the Darjeeling Council, who took the responsibility karmically for the order, was formed and St. Germain became the Knight Commander, the head of the fraternity. In that same year, Elizabeth finally found her guru. So my meeting with Mark Prophet took place in 1961 when I was a student at Boston University. After I had been searching for contact with the Master St. Germain for a period of about five years. And so I was reaching that moment of desperation, the desperate need for that contact and for that understanding. And so I said to myself, God in you is worthy to contact God in St. Germain. And so I leaped to my feet and I charged up the stairs to the fourth story on the roof, the flat roof of that apartment. And I put my hands into that blue sky and I had that determination and that fervor and I shouted into the blue and I said, Saint Germain, I know you're up there. You've got to come and get me now. I can't wait any longer. And I felt that energy go out and I felt that contact and I knew he was right there and I knew he was not going to say no. And I felt it sealed and I felt at peace. And finally, the compelling calls produced the answer of Mark Prophet journeying to Boston from Washington, holding a meeting and giving the first dictation which I heard, which was by Michael the Archangel. And as I entered that room and I sat in my seat that night, and I looked up at him, he was sitting at the altar in meditation. And he opened his eyes and looked at me, and I looked into those eyes, and I found the pair of eyes that I had been seeking my entire life. Those eyes spoke to my soul, and I knew that I had found my teacher and the one that was going to quicken in me the divine memory, what I had to do in this life, how I was going to do it, the teaching I needed to know, and the self-mastery of my being. It was shortly after her discovery of the Summit Lighthouse that Almoria appeared to Elizabeth. As I was walking in a park in Boston, the Master Almoria appeared to me and he said, go to Washington to be trained as a messenger. I have need of a feminine messenger. So, three years after the founding, Elizabeth began her training to be a messenger of the Ascended Masters. And so the training began. It was given by Saint Germain and El Moria with the assistance of Cthumi, Hilarion, Archangel Michael. The training was also the drawing forth of the office of messenger that had been bequeathed to me over many lifetimes. Some time later, Mark informed me that we were twin flames. And it was almost an oddity to me that here I have found my teacher and now he is telling me he is my twin flame. And so I thought, the cosmos is going to have to give me truth, the proof of this information. So I called to Elmoria and I said, I would like to have proof and evidence of this which I am being told. And so I made that call and I went about my business. And by and by, one day, I looked into the mirror as I was getting ready to go to school, and into that mirror I saw the face not of myself, but of the Holy Christ self of Mark Prophet, himself in that exalted image. And it was such a shocking experience because I saw my own inner Christ self, and I saw that he was the mirror image of it. In 1963, Mark and Mother were married. They began their work together, 
creating homes and ashrams of light as the organization grew. The first little house called Holy Tree House was bought out among the beautiful forests of Virginia. This little house was purchased. The down payment was forthcoming. Mark said, how are we going to pay the mortgage every month? I said, I'll print dictations and people will buy them. <laughs> so he looked at me and it, it sounded almost unbelievable because he said, I don't think anybody really wants to buy those dictations. So I said, oh yes, everybody wants the dictations. So we bought the house and I started typing plates. These were paper plates we used on the Davidson. Started typing dictations from classes. And as soon as I'd get a stack typed, I'd go into the press and put them on and ink up the press and roll them off. And classes continued and more and more people became interested in the work. Those were very, very precious moments. And of course, looking back upon them, we recall the great hope we had for expansion and the great promise of El Moria. There came a time, of course, when Holy Tree House was too small. It was so amazing that everything fit in there. The increasing staff, the new family that had come, all of the publications we were publishing. It was as though this was an elastic house that had expanded. <laughs> and when we moved everything out, it was like all the walls moved in again. So that was 1966, and we purchased our second location, which was called Beacon's Head, a much larger home that was in Vienna, Virginia. As Mother managed the services, publishing of the pearls, as well as her and Mark's growing family, Mark traveled with his assistant, Alex Reichardt, as they visited people heart to heart across the nation. Traveling with Mark around the country was like being in a time machine. He would read the Akashic Records recent and ancient and shared much of this with me. Driving across the country to California, suddenly Mark became quiet and went into a very high space. I thought he must be meditating and remain silent. And he turned to me and said, Elizabeth at this moment is starting her dictation. I believe it was from Kuan Yin, hundreds of miles away. Mark seemed to be suspended in higher realms, communing with mother and the master dictating. Time finally came for the great move out west. The discovery of the place that came to be known as La Terrell, the Citadel of Freedom, was a miracle in itself. We looked around, peeped in the windows, and I said to Mark, this is the place for St. Germain's activity. We didn't have any idea where the money would come from. I said, Mark, are we going to get that place in Colorado? He took his fist, he pounded my desk, and he said, unless the price of that property is cut in half, we won't even consider it. <laughs> That was a fiat, and there was no point in me saying anything. <laughs> he made the call to St. Germain. The matter was dropped. Later in the day, we drove into Washington, D.C., to our post office box, and in the box was a telegram from the realtor in Colorado Springs. Come immediately. Price of property cut in half. <laughs> La Tourelle was the center of light for the next seven years. Here, many seekers experienced the heart of Mark and Mother. The messengers traveled to Europe with students and spread the light of the teachings. One of their students, Tom Miller, wrote, Mark drove us into Germany. He remembered this area from his journeys here as Longfellow. Mark was constantly traveling to open the way for the light bearers to come into the spiritual path. In 1969, the Mother House in Santa Barbara became an additional home for the movement on the West Coast. It was here Mark led the first Ascended Masters University. Then came the world tours, as the messengers anchored the presence of the Masters in India, Egypt, Ghana, and the Holy Land. We visited various yoga ashrams there and marveled at the gorgeousness of Shah Jahan's Taj Mahal at Agra. We met with important government leaders in New Delhi, meditated at Mahatma Gandhi's memorial shrine, and most interesting of all, met the Dalai Lama of Tibet in his refugee camp at Dharamsala. Especially memorable, was a float down Mother Ganges in Gautama Buddha's beloved city of Benares. It was in Calcutta that they visited Mother Teresa, 
Those who are there remember her cool, shady, tiled open-air pavilion, lined with hundreds of grass mats, prayer rugs, and beds for the sick and dying who were cared for so tenderly by the nuns. Their crowded schedule took them from the tropical fields of Madras, the home of Madame Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society, to the northern foothills of the Himalayas. When we flew over the lofty white peaks of the mountains and dropped down into the valley, it seemed that at last we had flown into Shangri-La. It was spring there in Kashmir. Flowers were everywhere, and a cool breeze was blowing across from the lovely garden of Shalimar. Cairo, Egypt, what a fascinating place to be. Mark and Mother were eager to see the statue of Pharaoh Akhenaten. I hadn't realized that Akhenaten was an embodiment of Mark Prophet, but as we all gathered around this statue, Mark and Mother began to chuckle at the length of the Pharaoh's chin. Mark turned sideways so we could all examine his present long chin compared to the one of his past chin as Pharaoh. So one of the highlights was getting to ride a camel out in the Egyptian desert. What a natural mark was on his camel. We were always on a bus tour to some site or other around this holy city. I remember many times as 90 of us were all loading onto a variety of buses, Mark would open the door and climb the steps of each bus to search for mother. Lisbeth? 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 Are you here? On one bus tour, we were driving out in the country. Mark walked us to the edge of the large plateau, which overlooked a broad expanse of land below us. This is where the Battle of Armageddon will be fought, if it's going to happen in the physical, Mark said. But he stressed that it was never meant to be a physical battle, but only a battle on the inner. At the end of that seven-year cycle at La Tourelle, the prophecy which Mark had given to me the day that he met me came to pass. He told me that he would train me to be a messenger because God would soon call him home. He was taken one morning as he was by my side. He had stayed with us far beyond the time of his calling. Mother once wrote of Mark saying, Without Mark Prophet, we would know the Ascended Masters only by stories. We would know St. Germain by books and Moria by books. But through Mark Prophet, we know what it is like to have someone around who is the embodiment of the Masters. One day he would be Moria. The next hour he would be St. Germain. You would see him on the platform. He would give a dictation and he would be in that vibration. So we have that living witness. As long as Mark Prophet was an embodiment, we did not have to become the fullness of God incarnate because he was that God incarnate. During that period, we were dwelling in the bosom of Abraham. We lived in the bosom of Mark. So, abrupt as it was, his departure was the thrusting of all of these little fledglings outside of the bosom of Abraham and saying, now you become what I am. And the only way you can follow me is to become what I have become. The only way you can know that I am in the room with you, and the only way you can touch the hem of my garment, is to go through the initiations and put on the same cosmic consciousness I have put on by the same path of initiation, the same road from changing the water into wine to the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension. So the ascension of the two witnesses is fulfilled again and again. It was fulfilled in the ascension of Godfrey and Lotus. It was fulfilled in the ascension of Nicholas Rorick and Helena Rorick, twin flames who were messengers for Almoria, and therefore understand that we see it as a continuing office. With the ascension of Mark, a new era in the Summit Lighthouse began. It was the era of the secret rays, of the going within to the fiery core, following the initiation of the seven rays. Summit University began with Gautama Buddha and a dispensation which was given on January 1st, 1973. That was just seven weeks before the ascension of our beloved Mark. 
in a dictation given through him at the New Year's Eve class, the Regent Mother of the Flame, the Ascended Lady Master Clara Louise, came to the platform called by Gautama Buddha. And as I was seated on the platform next to Mark, who was standing giving the dictation, Gautama Buddha announced that she would present to me at the conclusion of the dictation a torch. And so I was called forth and received from Gautama at the hand of Clara Louise Kininger. In these words from Gautama, a torch charged with the vital fires from God's heavenly altar and the conveyance of a vast mission to illumine the world's children and produce the blessing of true culture to the age and to all people everywhere. This torch that was passed was a blazing light that merged with my own heart flame and from the moment it was given to me, I felt the impact of the responsibility for the enlightenment of mankind through Maitreya, through the world teachers, Jesus and Kuthumi. And so just six months later at Freedom 1973, I announced the founding of the first full-time quarter of Summit University in Santa Barbara. So Summit University is truly the hope of the Ascended Masters, the proving ground for souls, the sacred labor and working in the world community is interaction of your heart flame in the service of the Christ in humanity. The prophets realized the need for a spiritualized education and envisioned a school that teaches every secular subject infused with divine understanding. Summit University now offers transformative spiritual learning in the form of over 25 online courses and weekend seminars held around the world. In 1974, the Masters announced the founding of Church Universal and Triumphant. It is an inner church, and with inner attainment are we concerned, not with temples made with hands, but to that cube of white fire in the heart of every member. And the card of membership in this church will be that cosmic cube in the heart. It cannot be denied, it cannot be gainsaid. Those who are the communicants of the Lord have the cosmic cube as the altar of the heart, and the altar of the church is wherever the true member of the body of that church is. So then this is the church that is indestructible, immutable, eternal. In 1975, El Moria called for the founding of teaching centers worldwide. These centers were opened in Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Minneapolis, Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, and more internationally. These communities of light taught new students and offered prayers and dynamic decrees for the freedom and enlightenment of all. The next 10 years brought the community to Camelot, a beautiful valley in the Santa Monica Mountains. Mother said about Camelot, I feel that the tangible love that is here is a flame that springs up wherever the Chilas walk who have made their sacrifices. I think sacrifice is a flame and that the flowers bloom and the grasses grow because of the love that is in the heart of the Chilas. And that same love, multiplied by the heart of God, really is Camelot. From the beginning, we were winning, like champions of the Lord. We made the cross for a purpose, God's will gives us our minds. Once El Moria described the spirit of Camelot, I am Moria of the flame, and now with the ascended powers that I wield, I can send forth the wisdom and the love that is for the very nurturing of those souls that I long, long have loved. Who told you that we were very far removed from you? We have been here all the while, all these years and centuries. Really, no time or space has passed in this joy of the return all as it was, as it was then, the return to the white flame, and before us the vision of the grail that we must carry into the new world and into the new age. The next step on our cosmic journey was the inner retreat. The masters called us to a place prepared and the place of great encounters. 
Here, near the sign of Old Faithful and the Royal Teton Retreat of the Great White Brotherhood, the home of Maitreya's Mystery School was reborn. I'm very grateful that our beloved Lanello did direct us to this place. He told me that we must move our headquarters to Montana, that our primary goal was to see to it that the teachings should survive. He gave me the divine direction and said, go. And from beloved Kuthumi, the sponsor of the Royal Teton Ranch. Many years ago, I promised this messenger that when great numbers of souls would come, I would sponsor the place. And therefore she sent out the call to me, and I have been so preparing and so holding this land and this force field. Can you not see as I do that there is in fact almost no limit to the life streams who could converge here? In fact, the limitation is not space, but the time and the timing of the heart, the devotion therein, and the presence of the threefold flame. The limitation is self-appointed by those who would be followers of God, and yet do not come bearing the cup of joy, the cup of light, and the cup of mercy. Light, joy, and mercy are essential ingredients that those who form the circle of light and are truly the builders might be here together and might commune in the heart of Shambhala. Our todays and yesterdays are the blocks with which we build. Truly shape and fashion these, leave no yawning gaps between. Think not, because no man sees, such things will remain unseen. In the elder days of art, builders wrought with greatest care. Each Thus do the earth currents and the rippling of the movements of the air over the elevations and the valleys meet the descending currents of spiritual waves and fires and emanations of Gautama and of the Royal Teton Retreat. O oh, wondrous ancient mountains, covered with white fire snow of etheric octaves, and of our chila's calls here below. O wondrous mountain, white fire snow, roseate in the dawn of life and of love, we salute the mountain of our God. In 1984, Sonic Kumara gave a powerful dispensation from the great central sun to dedicate the land of the Royal Teton Ranch to the healing light, and called for a healing center to be built for the world. So I radiate through all hearts of the hierarchy of the sun who have determined with me as below so above to intensify the healing light and the healing arts of the ancient science. Thus we come, thus we intensify and thus we respond to draw down the light of the Buddha, to draw down the light of the Mother, we come, we come to dedicate the land of the Royal Teton Ranch to the healing light, to the healing center, to the healing center of the world, where all may come and dip into the water of life of the Mother and be cared for by the dedicated servants of light moving on the highway of life and caring for all without discrimination, without prejudice, but serving the body of God as the body of God, as the body of the Mother, as the temple of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We come then to deliver unto you measure for measure as you raise up the mighty Kundalini fire, so we draw down the image and the blueprint of the etheric temple and the etheric city and the etheric centers of the healing arts. Four years later, beloved Lanello, dictating in Fatima on the anniversary of his Ascension Day, mentioned again these healing waters, anchoring the light of Mother Mary and the retreat of Fatima here in the western Shambhala. Let the eagles fly. Let the eagles fly, for the way is known. The sign was given to Martha. 
by Jesus long ago. Let it be known that this is more than a physical place of safety, but an etheric retreat of the Divine Mother and the Buddha, an etheric passageway to realms of light and victory. Thus out of the mighty yellow stone and from deep within the earth do the healing waters of the Divine Mother flow. And therefore the call of the ark of the Western Shambhala is the anchoring there of the retreat of Fatima. Thus this is the true call we make in this hour, that Fatima, our Fatima, as the place where Mary does speak and is heard and not denied by church or state, Fatima be reborn even as Camelot is called again. In June of that year, Mother explained how truly powerful that arcing of light was and what Mother Mary intended. What was accomplished in Lisbon and in Fatima was not only the opening of that retreat of the archangels, but also the arcing of that retreat to this inner retreat and to this heart of the Royal Teton Ranch. The transfer of the energy of Fatima is the energy of healing of the prophecies of Mother Mary in Fatima, as well as the etheric retreat that is over the area of Fatima. It is Mother Mary's great vision to see this place as a place flowing with the healing waters, even the waters that flow under the earth from the Yellowstone. I would like all of you then to realize that it is a very momentous occasion to realize just how powerful is that presence of Fatima in this heart of the inner retreat. In 1992, she further explained during Summit University that our geothermal waters have enormous potential for healing power. The waters are so full of minerals. I think that those waters, when we are finally able to use them, and when we make the call for them to be charged as a vessel for Mother Mary's healing, that we will see tremendous unburdening of the light bearers. Our plan, of course, is to have the pools for the various temperatures for people to use them for healing. It can be used for those various baths and swimming pools. It can be used to heat the greenhouse after it goes through the pipes in the swimming pool. I just have the sense that that water is very powerful. And when Mother Mary chooses to, if she ever does choose to so do, the water is the right molecular structure to be a chalice for the spiritual light. Plans to develop the hot springs had to be put on hold for years as a series of governmental studies and negotiations had to be done to ensure the water rights as well as the ecological effects of its use. On the alchemical 33rd anniversary of the Summer Lighthouse at the Inner Retreat, a renewed dispensation was granted for 33 more years to fulfill our mission. The Masters told us that this dispensation was a great victory. I am Michael, and I have set forth a cosmos of divine protection for this summit lighthouse in the beginning, and I shall sustain it unto the ending of the cycles of its purpose in the matter cosmos. Yes, beloved, I have sent forth the ray with my sword of blue flame for the protection of the divine plan in this activity. And you are that divine plan, for the divine plan is fulfilled through your causal body of light. Therefore, be ye bodhisattvas on the path of the first ray of your dear El Moria and myself. Therefore I say, beloved, let the conclusion of this year and cycle of the celebration of the 33 
B for the violet flame transmutation of all that should not have been within these 33 years and for the fulfillment of all that should be and should have been achieved. The heart of this activity in this octave must be your heart and your heart says one did not El Moria come forth to wrap the diamond heart of Mary in his own diamond heart, thus signifying the power of the masculine and the feminine ray, thus signifying the presence of the cosmic virgin and the founding of this community. Because this activity was our last and best hope for this age. We, the seven, have given to it our all. Our all and highest good is divine love. Therefore, that love has descended. Inasmuch as we have known that there would not be another dispensation forthcoming from Helios and Vesta, or the four and twenty elders, we determine, beloved, to commit so much of ourselves and our causal bodies and many unnamed saints of the early church and those of other dispensations of ages beyond recorded history. All have contributed all have determined that we should give a cornucopia of light and love and wisdom and the finest sponsorship and tutoring of hearts and souls. Two thirds of the purposes that were to be fulfilled in these 33 years have been accomplished. One third remains, beloved, and therefore I trust you will see and understand as the emphasis has come forth in the dictations and from the heart of the messengers that the outreach and the presentation of the teachings in every form and in the media and by your heart to heart and person to person delivery of the word, this must give the increase for the Summit Lighthouse is more than an organization, it is the community, it is the Sangha of the Buddha, it is the Dharma of the Buddha, and it is the Buddha itself. These three jewels, these three, take refuge in them, in the very person of the Buddha, the Buddha whom you see, yes, beloved. Meditate upon the God whom you can see, and you shall become that one. Yes, this is the Summit Lighthouse. It is awareness by the three dots. Now you know the three dots are the Sangha, the Dharma, and the Buddha. I take my refuge in them, which means I take my refuge in your heart, beloved. Your heart is the place of the inner Buddha, even as your I am presence is the Buddha. I take refuge in the heart of my chila. Where else can I go in this octave? I tell you nowhere, nowhere but to the heart of the chila that does intone, not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Many of those who were a part of the beginnings, those gray heads who came to me in those days from other activities, have made the transition, have gone to etheric octaves, some taking their ascension, some returning. And I celebrate their birth in this community with great rejoicing. I am a grandfather and a great, 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 great grandfather many times over to the same souls, beloved, and I enjoy it to the fullness of my office. You who have drunk 
from the fount must pass to others, that stream unending. Let the word go forth, for this is part of the unfinished business. We cannot bury the word in the napkin of our filing cabinets and think that we do God's service. Yes, all words that have been spoken are intended to be assimilated and heard and read as the everlasting gospel. The foundation of this activity is love. Love brings to the highest manifestation and flowering the blossoms in springtime, the fruit of the tree and of the tree of life and of the word of God, the highest meaning of all teachings that have come forth through the I am activity, through theosophy, even through the bridge to freedom. Yes, the highest truths have yet to bear their fruit by the full manifestation of love love that does impart them and convey such profound understanding that immediately upon hearing the teaching by one empowered with love, they may attain heights of consciousness to which they have not yet reached. You who would go forth to teach, call for the heart of Jesus and Kuthumi. Call for the heart of Maitreya and the fire desire to convey a cup of living flame fit for the person and persons you speak to. Yet I tell you the good joy of your effort. It is this, beloved. One child of light turned around counts for many, for it is the law of the one, and that one at his level of being and karma has access to all those vibrating at that same plane. There is a multiplication, beloved, and the fruit of the sowings of yourselves with the messengers in these years is yet coming to harvest. All that you need to know to defeat that which seeks to defeat you is in your hand, I, your brother, in the path of the Buddha. Recommend that you become fierce as Kali. Yes, beloved, it is a time for a great battle. It is a time for a great victory. You are our best and our last hope for the redeeming of all that we have contributed to this mighty stream of divine love descending to the chalice of hearts of light on earth. Everyone who has ever walked the earth and contributed to the victory of an age or a community, everyone will echo my sentiments from the octaves of light. You are the last and best hope for the fulfillment of our respective missions that remain unfulfilled until the full victory of love is won. Therefore, I say to you, in the words of the goddess of liberty and quoted by your beloved El Moria, march on, march on, beloved. Two years later, El Moria gave another landmark dictation on the 35th anniversary. He told us of his time as Akbar and his goal of founding a universal religion of divine love. He speaks to us from his diamond heart about his greatest concern, and calls his chilas to fulfill his vision. First and foremost, the greater cause of the summit lighthouse is that cause of divine love. Love meeting every level. Love that is understanding. Love above all that is forgiveness. And that goal is to see to it that every light bearer in the earth has the opportunity to study this teaching and this was St. Germain's dream already in 1930 when he introduced the violet flame through Godfrey and Lotus. This is 1993, and still, beloved, this teaching has not made its way into the heart and home of every single light bearer upon earth. We say, beloved, that this is our greatest concern. 
The greater cause that lies before you then is the maximizing of what you have, the multiplication of holy purpose, and the fervor of the Holy Spirit in your heart that does make you desire, no matter what the price, no matter what the cost, to give of this cup of self-knowledge and the knowledge of the path to so many. The masters and the messengers, through the work of their students, are giving the world a renaissance of spiritual truths, cosmic history, inspiring stories, the path of initiation, the guru chila relationship, and the mystical truths of the world's religions. Imagine a world where every home follows the path of light. And through that antakarana of light, we connect as one in the diamond heart. Out of the diamond heart of the Divine Mother, I am come to you, beloved. For long ago I beheld that heart and I determined to fashion that diamond heart within myself. Now see, beloved, how as I am her instrument, so you are intended to be. El Moria does teach this path of devotion to the will of God by that diamond heart to each and every one of his chilas, I come to tell you in this hour of this year's Christ Mass that El Moria does call you and call you again to be a part of his order in which I join him, the order of the Diamond Heart. This order, beloved, is dedicated to the giving of one's heart to form the sacred heart of Jesus. Whereas one individual may not be able to bear that sacred heart alone, many who pledge to bear it may become components of the one great heart of our Lord. It is the same principle of the body of God upon earth. Many members, but one body, thus many hearts also form one diamond heart. This diamond heart is Christ's own heart of the will of God. Nothing can withstand it, for its light intensity is greater than all darkness of the dark ones in the earth. In November of 2006, the dream of a healing hot springs was reawakened as the final papers were signed by the state and national officials to ensure our rights to Mother Mary's Leduc hot springs water in perpetuity. On October 15, 2009, Mother took her leave of Earth and made her ascension. But she has never truly left us, for as she wrote, forever we are one. Watching mothers steer the ship of these teachings through the treacherous waters of this planet made me want to be not only a student of these teachings, but also a spiritual soldier fighting alongside her. I am honored to have been involved in many a battle she has fought on behalf of St. Germain, the Brotherhood, and the many souls just trying to evolve on this planet. I can say that I am truly honored to be considered a friend of hers. For what I saw in our messenger was a most shining example of a devotee of the will of God in its most fiery manifestation. Oh, how she loved her master El Moria, Chohan of the will of God. Defending those of us who took up this path of initiation and studied these teachings 
She was like a lioness defending her cubs. She was absolutely fierce in her determination to see that these teachings got dictated and published and that they got translated and distributed to the very farthest corners of the earth. In August of 2012, the next Hot Springs victory took place. The team broke ground and began the task of laying a pipeline from Leduc Hot Springs to the location of the future Hot Springs facility. And we're so grateful to Mother Mary, and we're so grateful for the Masters and beloved Guru Malanello for bringing us here at this time, at this very sacred time, this historic moment in history where a mecca of light is going to be built for millions to come and be healed through these sacred waters. This is not only for the expansion for our church and organization, it is for, it's also for the raising of the Mother Flame. So it's a very important moment for all of us. We are here because of the sponsorship of the Brotherhood. Around the United States, there's many centers where people can go to spas and, and sit in hot water. But it's not this water. This water, by our hearts, is blessed. This water from Mother Mary, through our hearts, is blessed. And it'll be an opportunity for us to be love in action and be the teachings. And I think it's a huge, important next step in our chila ship. I'm sure we're all grateful for this way that we can love the people in the world. This was completed in December of that year, finishing with the construction of a footbath as an anchor for the pools to come. Now, in 2018, the first stage of Sana Kumara and Mother Mary's great plan has come into the physical. May this be one of many promises fulfilled and victories won for the Brotherhood and our beloved Bapu. As Mother said herself, we loved him before we knew him. We follow El Moria all the way home. Here is El Moria's vision of his summit lighthouse. I am the diamond heart of this movement, and I am determined that it shall not fail for the Chila one by one will not fail. The ashram is ever present. It is a world order. There are many members outside of this community who are my chilas. They uphold the ashramic consciousness and the antakarana has been a building for 30 40 years and more. For the understanding of the ashram as the house of light, the dwelling place of the guru and the chila, gives comfort to all. It is the comfort flame midst the storm. It is the light in the cabin window that is seen afar off by the traveler through the night storm. Our beloved Mark, the ever-present guru, shares his everlasting love for his teacher, El Moria. He speaks for our hearts, too. Remember, then, that the heart 
that has truly loved never forgets. I have loved you long before you ever found my footprints in the sands in this or in previous lifetimes. I have loved you because we are a part of a mandala. We came from Venus together. We were trained in Mercury. We were trained in the God Star. Some or all of you were trained in these various places as a part of our bands. And yes, we have served long and lovingly our beloved Akbar, our beloved El Moria. Just imagine for a moment, beloved ones, this universe without El Moria. It is as though someone pulled the chain on the light and all of a sudden the light went out and we say, where is Moria? What a heavenly sponsor. I would not have been called to be a messenger had Moria not called me. I would not have found Elizabeth. And would you have found one another or received the sponsorship of the wondrous souls that have been brought to your families? Oh, blessed ones, think of the absence of one hierarch and then imagine so many, many ascended masters and cosmic beings and how each one has played such a unique yet integral role in the forming of this community, in the forming of the Great White Brotherhood. Think of it, beloved. Can you imagine what great commitment there is in the heart of El Moria, as Akbar, as Melchior, as so many of his embodiments have been directed, been the striving toward that one world religion that is the religion of divine love that surpasses all man-made doctrines, divisions, and separations. Yes, beloved, El Moria and the Darjeeling Council, that is the palace of light that has superseded the palace from which Akbar did rule in India. Thus he has taken up his abode and thus he is eager to see this teaching reach everyone upon earth who has that spark of hope, that revolutionary spirit and that inner knowledge that the world can be won through love Yes, beloved ones, so many, many ascended masters are dedicated to this cause. And therefore, one and all, from the octaves of light, angels, ascended beings, and those saints almost ascended, send you mighty salutations, affirmation of your victories, and applaud you now from all octaves. Blessed ones, Keep on keeping on. You are winning. And from the beginning, we were winning. Why, beloved ones, think of all that you have already passed through and know that the day dawns of a great manifestation of the great central sun in your hearts. I am Lanello with El Moria and many who celebrate in this hour. You, beloved hearts, have good cause for celebration, for you have had many, many victories. On this we shall build the future of this community.